Sri Lanka, an island paradise in the Indian Ocean, that can also be hell. He's a fiery fellow. Got 19 million people live here, but so do some of the world's most dangerous creatures. And the most feared amongst them is a snake. The Russell's Viper. Its venom is lethal. The only antidote, less than effective. That's why I'm here, to catch this wild and aggressive snake. Because the venom that kills is also the key to the cure. Watch the Russell! Oh, he's out of a big gun. Watch that Russell. Here we go. The Russell's Viper. It kills more people throughout its range in Asia than any other snake. But the Sri Lankan population is especially deadly. The unpredictable effect of its venom is like a deadly cocktail of Ebola, paralyzing nerve toxins, and gangrene. Within minutes, victims can start bleeding from every orifice. Clinical shock can begin to shut down the body's circulation. Simultaneously, the poisons may start to destroy living tissue. A painful death often follows. Around 30,000 people on this island are bitten by Russell's vipers every year. Hundreds are killed. An exact figure is not known because many never make it to hospital. Patients everywhere sharing beds. And the staff are doing everything they possibly can to not only save their lives, but also to make their recoveries more comfortable, less painful. The scale of Sri Lanka's problem has led to international efforts to develop a targeted, fully effective anti-venom. I've been called in by the world's leading snake bite expert to catch snakes for the program. But these snakes have evolved incredible camouflage. Most victims don't see them until it's too late. Finding them in the wild will be both difficult and dangerous. Like all vipers, this snake has a pair of really large, hinged fangs at the front of his mouth. When he strikes, he opens his mouth to not far short of 180 degrees. The fangs come forward like a couple of sabers. They penetrate in the strike. The lower jaw closes on the prey or the victim, further forcing the fangs in, and a huge dose of venom is injected. It's all over in a flash. The consequences are extremely serious. I would use the term terrible to sum up Russell's Viper. It is really a terrible sight. In the region with the greatest number of snake bite deaths, medical teams struggle to cope with the sheer volume of victims. Their only weapon in this war is an anti-venom produced in India to combat bites from Indian Russell vipers. The venom of these Sri Lankan snakes has differing toxic effects and the Indian drug does not deal with all of them. In dangerously large doses, the Indian version can keep people alive, but violent allergic reactions are common, and the financial cost of these large doses is crippling. Last night, this bed was occupied by a Russell Viper snake bite victim. He died four hours after admission from a cerebral hemorrhage she bled into the brain. Word 
reaches us from the hospital about another victim. But this time, not a paddy worker. Nine-year-old Suresh was bitten early evening while playing in the garden. He falls into the other main group of Russell's Viper victims. Villagers bitten after dark on badly lit roads and paths. Most people walk barefoot and do not carry torches, but Suresh did have a torch and identified the snake as Russell's Viper before he lapsed into semi-consciousness. It was a large snake and a serious bite. The medical team must work fast. But because Suresh was smart enough to recognize the snake as a Russell's Viper, at least the doctors can prepare the most appropriate treatment available. They decide to give him a large dose of Indian antivenom. This in itself could kill Suresh if he suffers a serious allergic reaction. But his father has no option. Without treatment, his son will die. The Russell's Viper. Its irascible temperament and rapid strike make it a real handful. I know by gently squeezing the glands on the side of his head just behind his eyes, you saw how fast that strike was. That's how fast it would be if you stay next to him. See the venom on the latex and also sun in the bottom of the receptacle. Suresh has reached a critical stage. Russell's Viper venom stays in the bloodstream for many days, and its deadly effects can reactivate if anti-venom levels are not monitored and kept topped up. Suresh knew what snake had bitten him, which meant the medics could treat him straight away. Victims are encouraged to take the snake in with them for positive identification. Any delay in treatment can cause further complications, and although Suresh and his family acted quickly, the venom that's still in his bloodstream could be killing him, causing internal bleeding or damaging his kidneys beyond repair. News of my mission to capture Sri Lanka's most feared snake is spreading. More locals have been recruited to help in my Russell's Viper search. In a forest bordering to shoes paddy fields, one group has uncovered what they say is a venomous snake. Okay. The upshot of this is I've seen a snake go into this pile. They haven't seen it come out. They've waited till I arrive, which is very good discipline. I'm impressed by that. You see it? Do you see it? Yes. Ooh. Okay. Yes. It's a little hump nose viper. So it is a venomous little critter. And what's more? <laughs> oh, nature working against me. What's more, it's a pregnant little hump nose viper, a fully adult female. When she strikes, she'll open her mouth almost to uh, well, probably about 160 degrees, and the fangs will be forward facing, they'll penetrate and inject the venom, which um, causes necrosis, destruction of tissue, localized swelling, and um, there have been deaths in Sri Lanka to bites from uh, this snake, and the deaths are generally through kidney failure. The hump nose viper isn't the only snake on the fringe of the paddy fields. In no time, I bag a hunt. What a beauty. Nice size. You forget I'm not good at Come back here. At the hospital, the beds are spilling over with snake bite victims. 
Suresh is still suffering from both the Russell's Viper Venom and his allergic reaction to the less than effective anti-venom. What? What? Right, seal this off. Seal this off over here. Scrub stick. I don't know. Yes. Let's get everyone over here before we attack this. Right, okay. What we want everyone to do... Anselm? If the boys can clear the brush, we can be alert to... to grab the snake. Can they start? Mark? Yeah? Before you all do any disturbances... The holes there... Holes. Probably gone down all those holes. Watch the Russells! All right, we've got him then. Yes, we've got him. Perfect. It's a big Russell's Viper. Whoo! Care, care, care. This. This is it. This is myself and some in my graph. This is what this is what these things are designed for. The safe handling of extremely, extremely dangerous snakes like this Russell Viper. I want to get him out to somewhere where I can deal with him more safely. Can you bring that grab stick please, Anson? Let's get him out in the open where I've got a bit of room to play with. Thank you. You can see how big a strike he's got. Oh, he's having a big go. Very business. Business. Our first fully charged, perfectly healthy, undamaged, Russell's Viper for our anti-venom program. Look at this snake, it looks like a carpet. You think, how could that possibly ever be camouflage? Could you see him in there? I have to look hard. It's coming up towards dusk. This is a nocturnal snake. This is when it comes out hunting. This is when people meet them on the roads. And if you're not carrying a torch and you're walking barefoot, this is when you get bitten by what is arguably one of the most, if not the most dangerous snake in the world, and certainly the most dangerous snake in Sri Lanka. I'm going to put him in very carefully because at the moment I actually release his head, my fingers are very, very close to a rather annoyed Russell's Viper. <laughs> another defense from this Dharma rat snake. The scent from his cloacal glands, which is designed by many um, reptiles as a, a further defense to make them smell pungent and unpleasant and to get them left alone. The rains have come. The downpour will activate the food chain, including small mammals and then snakes. Also approaching the peak of the paddy harvest, and there's a deluge of people in the fields. Sri Lankans are returning to their family homes to help with the harvest, but bites increase when people who don't normally farm work the paddy. 
the hospital starts to receive its own flood of Russell's Viper victims. 15-year-old Mayana is in a life-threatening state, but she's not a Paddyfield victim. She was bitten while hanging out washing. It's on the right ankle, on the oh, lateral axis. That's a good bite. Is that a big snake? How, how, oh, she's gone again. Oh, she's flat. This is oh. French blood. She's vomiting French blood. So this is one of the dreaded complications of Russell's type of right. You've got blood that is, has been rendered incalculable, non coxable and uh, holes in the blood vessel walls. In your bath? Of course, the major worry here is, is um, leakage of blood into, into the brain. Well, if, if the hemorrhage inducing factor uh, affects the blood vessels in the brain that at any time that could cause a stroke. In Sri Lanka, at this time of year, people like Nayana die every day from Russell's viper bites. These people have to go to the paddy to harvest their crops. If they don't, they can't live. If they do, they may die. It's a hell of a quandary. Fancy going out in the morning just to do a job of work, not knowing whether you're going to be lying here with a Russell's Viper bite by the evening, in severe pain. It really is a hard life. So uh, this is the girl who was, who was so worried about this. Yes. Today. How's she feeling today? She's much better. Nayana is recovering, but the venom is still affecting nerve impulses to some muscles, causing facial paralysis. Luckily, she was bitten only four miles from this hospital, one of the best treatment centers for snake bites on the island. The speed of her treatment and the medic's expertise has saved her. There is one final emotional mission to complete. I join Professor Worrell and Dr. Arirani Araratnam to visit the home of Suresh. And how is he now? See, he's very lively and he's smiling away and he's is happy. Is he back to normal? Uh, then the after who's Sama Nividium and Vedakar no other. No, he's yes. And there's... My so he's pushed the torch on and pointed at the ground now when he's walking around in the dark. Not everyone is as lucky as Suresh and Nayana. Other hospitals in Sri Lanka have far less facilities and expertise, and many victims die without ever making it to hospital or getting help.